Welcome once again to The Breakfast. At least one student has been shot dead by police who are trying to break up a protest over increased tuition fees in Kaduna. The students of the Kaduna State College of Education were demonstrating the hike in fees by more than 100%. Joining us to talk about this is the Public Relations Officer of the Nigerian Association of University Students, uh, Mr. Shone Leko. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, sir. Good morning. All right, let's first of all start um, with uh, understanding the reason behind the protest and um, what exactly happened. Okay, good morning once again. Thank you for having me on your TV. Thank you very much. Uh, firstly, we need, really need to understand that um, we are in a very critical situation in this country today with all sectors down, uh, most importantly, the education sector, which we represent. And what happened is that a couple of times ago, the Kaduna state government increased the tuition fee of all state-owned institutions in the states for about 100% increment. So, and coupled with the fact that we all know the current situation of uh, the states with uh, the government refusing to pay a uh, salary to optimum level, sometimes they hold uh, even pensioners, their pensions and all that. So an increment in tuition fee, even if just by 1% at all, can metamorphose into a student uh, peaceful protest because we have a bad economy, we have a situation in the country whereby people are going through hard means to even survive. Not to mention talking about an increment in tuition fee. And this was what led the student of Cardinal State uh, College of Education to come out in mass yesterday to protest and uh, register their displeasure about uh, the, the, the increment in the tuition fee. Without necessarily forgetting the fact that in this same Cardinal State, the governor of the state had use uh, the mechanism of the, uh, the uh, authorities of the institutions to compel the students and their parents or guardians to sign a kind of form which would keep them in perpetual silence that whatever the university or the college of education or the polytechnic in Cardinal State uh, management decides that would that would uh, the student would always comply and live by it so all of these conditions are, are, are conditions that restrict, that put restrictions on fundamental right of women, not necessarily students now, not to mention when students who are educated, who are supposed to always make their opinion known. So this was what necessitated the protest yesterday, mm -hmm. increment in tuition fee, the uh, uh, unusual uh, barbaric form that the students were compelled to sign so that they conform with any policies of different institutions in the state. Well, was, so it a, this, was it a violent a for the protest? Was it a so, violent protest? We, we all know the situation we find ourselves in this country. If there is anyone that has uh, 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 made the uh, that has erupted uh, disrupted the protest it is the, the men of the nigerian police and other paramilitary forces on ground students could not have been violent did they see the governor of course they could not have bent uh, their their anger on innocent people so why would they have been violent in the first instance okay. these were peaceful protesters the same manner the nigerian police force disrupt protesters in Lagos, disrupt protesters in Kano, disrupt protesters even at the Eagle Square in Abuja. That was the same thing that happened yesterday. They started shooting sporadically and people started running for, for the safety of their lives. So okay. there was no, uh, no, uh, no violence from the angle of the student at all. Okay, Mr. Leiko, a statement by the police spokesman, Mohamed Jalige, said that the protesters blocked the convoy of a military sector commander and they injured him and someone else. Can you confirm that that happened? Uh, thank you very much. 
The question we would like, uh, would like to ask ourselves as mm. citizens who understand the situation of this country very well is that who, which civilian would have that audacity, that courage to injure a, 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 military, a, a military man? Even in a situation whereby there is no protest, we are, we are just walking by, going by our daily activities as civilians. We all know how we panic when we see a typical Nigerian uh, soldier in uniform. So, so what, if it, what, what if it wasn't in uniform? Is it possible that that may have happened? That, that could not have been possible. That so, so Mr. Leko, are you... Mr. Aleko, are you, are, you then, are you then saying that the police statement is false? Of course. The police has an antecedent of always covering, uh, putting up propaganda to cover up their, their illicit acts. It happened in 2015 in the Federal University of Agriculture at Belkuta. A student was shot. The police came up with, uh, an, uh, with another uh, story. It happens everywhere. This is not the first time this kind of story. In fact, we would not be surprised if the Nigerian police uh, force headquarters make a statement today again that, in fact, their, uh, their officers were injured, their officers did not shoot at all, that they did not even go to the protest down with tear gas. It is not so unusual for the Nigerian police force to issue statements that are contradictory to realities. Okay, they so... They are well known for that. Leko, um, the... Bone of contention here in the first place was about increase in you know school fees, and we know that um, particularly for this school, this uh, Federal College of Education in Gidangwaya, Kafanchan in Kaduna State, um, students say the school fees was increased from twenty five thousand naira to seventy five thousand naira. Is that what applies to every other um, state school in Kaduna, or it was just College of Education? No, it's not only in in College uh, Kaduna State. Uh, uh, university, it was increased to over 100,000 naira. From what? From how much? From, they pay barely, barely less than uh, by about 50,000 naira. So then the, go the government, you see, we have a situation in this country whereby it is even impossible for, a, for, for any Nigerian student to state categorically how much we pay as fees session because apart from the tuition fee you find okay for instance but in a normal standard 21st century the tuition fee should uh, uh, should include the medical uh, medical uh, bills uh, electricity bills and other things but you have a situation in Nigeria that you pay you have a situation whereby you pay hundred thousand as tuition fee you still have to pay medical fees separately. You pay computer fees separately. Different levies. So it becomes even difficult to state categorically that this is the fees we pay in our institutions in, the, in, in this country. So right. it's just that Governor Bufai has just taken it too far. Too far than his counterpart. is playing the, the, the oppressive uh, game better than his counterpart. And All right. So um, it's, uh, share with us what's the current situation on ground. Um, the reports say that one student was uh, killed. Uh, can you confirm that that you know um, happened as a result of uh, police fire? And then also, uh, where you know where are we currently with regards to the protest? Oh, uh, thank you very much. The 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 student was killed by the men of the Nigerian police. In fact. If I, I am opportunity, uh, maybe to your correspondent, I can send pictures of the, of the deceased students. Several of them were injured. And this morning, one would have expected to hear, to hear the breaking news that a student of the uh, College of Education in Kaduna State have started disrupting uh, the cities or uh, the city of the, uh, the society, uh, the community in which their school, their, uh, their school is located. But yet, these students are still well coordinated. They are still planning on how to uh, progress peacefully, on how to engage the government in a peaceful manner. Mm -hmm. 
they, they should show at least they should pass a message to the the Kaduna State government and the Nigerian government at large that we have a generation of youth and students who are so uh, coordinated, very peaceful for that matter. I mean, who, 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 who are these students that could have seen one of their colleagues or probably even more to be found out shot dead and the, the next morning they will still be peaceful, there wouldn't be violence reported from that place. So that should tell us that the student couldn't have been violent in the first instance without uh, police or necessary repression. So as at this morning, the students are still coordinating themselves, having meetings uh, to look for way forward on what and what to do. Because in the first instance, the reason behind the protest was the unnecessary increment in, in their tuition fee. Now added to it is the fact that a life has been lost, at least somewhere were injured. Expectedly, a responsible government, a responsible government should have issued a statement regretting its action. Because the governor cannot claim not to be the, the chief security officer of the state. So whatever the men of the Nigerian police could have done yesterday, is the governor who is equally liable for whatever they, they, they've done yesterday. So it expectedly it should have made a statement regretting that action and, as a matter of fact, trying to come in to settle the crisis. Now, okay, these are, okay, in fact, as a matter of fact, call the junior leaders of that particular campus. Engage them. This is how, how things are done in a civil society. So, Leko, um, a statement from the Deputy Governor in Kaduna, Dr. Hadiza Balarabi, says that the increase in school fees will not be reversed. What then would the students do? Continue to protest? Continue to seek dialogue? When the government has insisted that they're not going, not going back on the hike in school fees? Okay, the question is, we, we have three steps. In, uh, in our luta, we say consultation, consolidation, and then confrontation. The confrontation, of course, is the protest action. The uh, tuition fee has been increased for a while now. These student leaders have consulted the institution management, the state government, but to no avail. The only response the government would give them is to, through the uh, institution management, give them a kind of uh, uh, under, uh, uh, undertaking form to fill with their payments that whatever the management of that institution decides or whatever the government's uh, policy is, they would always abide by it. We, I mean, we are not in... I, I can't, I've, I, I'm a student of political science. I can't read, I haven't read in history that at any point in time, even the government of, uh, any government as at 17th century asked uh, 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 their citizens not to converge, not to express their displeasure about policies of the state. So if the governor, deputy governor is saying that the, uh, the, the tuition fee cannot be decreased, what sh should come to mind is that why do they keep on increasing tuition fee every year, stating that the, the economy is bad, the government, uh, the government can no longer fund education freely. It, education has never been free in the first instance. So they should stop giving us, we can no longer fund education freely. It has never been free. No, but are you? why have they not cut the expenses that the state incurred on political office orders. Oh, well, that's a that's a different conversation. You know, um, let's you know remain. Well, I'm, on, uh, I get. I'm trying to draw a, a perspective there. Yeah, I get that it. I get it. I, I just want us to. I, I understand your point. You know, um, about having to reduce expenses of uh, government or the cost to run government in the state. You know, and that might um, make it easier for universities to run. Um, but um, what happens next? Uh, is, does the protest then continue? 
Is there a consideration of maybe uh, going to court? Um, is there uh, other unions that may want to join hands with the students' uh, union to maybe approach a court and see what uh, the, the court says in Kaduna State? Oh, thank you very much. You see, we are, we are not, uh, uh, we are progressive students, ideological for that matter, who will continue to use the legal and the political action because a life has been lost. There has to be a damage. There has to be a damage. So that in itself has set aside a court case in the first instance. Other unions, we ask ourselves that for how long would we keep quiet? Even if we if we resort to engaging in dialogue now, do we have the kind of government that, that is ready to listen and dialogue? No. This is a government. In fact, what could have even given us the assurance that nobody has to be no, no nobody has to be told that what happened in Kaduna was not violent until the Nigerian uh, police force started that uh, uh, violence uh, attitude. Is what happened when the Nigerian Labour Congress in that particular state also took up an action. We also what the the state government did to them. So, in, invariably, what I'm trying to say, in essence, is that we are still coordinating ourselves. No amount of repression can keep us silent in our country. These people have for so long destroyed this nation. And it is our own, out of every generation, out of relative obscurity, must discover its own mission. It's either we betray it or we feel it. That's Grand Fanon. So, invariably, we have to keep the pressure high. The okay. government, there has never been a time in the history of any nation that the government won the people. The people would always win, no matter how long it takes. Well, and, if, if you look at the you know, last protest in Kaduna by the um, NLC, with regards to uh, sacking of, um, of um, uh, workers in Kaduna State, uh, I, I'm not sure how much success that... Um, uh, that achieved. So does that also maybe tell you that Kaduna State Government is not one to renege or to reverse its policies regardless of uh, protests? Yes, yes. We have, I know, we, uh, like I have said earlier on, that uh, the Kaduna State Government under Governor Yegufai is well known for such uh, policies and actions over time. So we are not caught by surprise about what happened yesterday. For some of us who have really taken keen interest in what has been going on in Kaduna for a while now, we are not surprised because it's not unusual of the government of that state. But what is most important is that the more, I think the governor and his executives need to learn from history that the more the people are oppressed, the more you begin to raise their consciousness. A time will come, we would rise. And the time is now. But no one cannot, cannot ban protest because it is a fundamental human right guaranteed by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. If Governor Egufa is saying that protest is not allowed in the state, then he is indirectly telling us that the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is not applicable in Kaduna State, which invariably means that he himself is not a, a legitimate governor because it is on, upon the basis, condition of that same 1999 Constitution that the election and the process that brought him into power was based so, Governor Ebufai saying that protest is not allowed in Kaduna State is meaning to say that the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is not allowed in a state, thereby saying that he himself is not legitimate to govern the state. Right. And we would not allow an individual to rob us of, of our human rights. All right, let's no talk, let's talk about the... Can stop that. 
Yeah, let's talk about the student who died now. Is there any information on, uh, on, the, on the student who died? Um, uh, you know, what, what uh, can you tell us about him or her? Yeah, it's actually him. If, like I said, I would have, uh, if uh, possible, I would have uh, sent a uh, picture. He was short stead. Like every other student, he joined the protest. But for now, in fact, a lot of students who could have shown up and identified with him are really scared to come out. We all know the kind of uh, situation we have in Kaduna State. So we are still trying our best possible, at least, to identify with him, with the parent. You know, when situations like this come up, it's so, just so sad that for every time students want to express their displeasure, would have to lose most times get injured or even lose one of some of our members just to say that this thing we do not want it so for now there has not been a reach to the family reason we have to link to some other students who are really scared right now because of what happened in Cardona State yesterday so we just hope before the end of today, we should be able to unravel their the full identity, identify with the parents, and then from there we'll know uh, what next step to take on that. Okay. So, Leiko, the news also says that even the police uh, spokesman confirmed that actually three students were injured and they were rushed to the hospital, but that one student unfortunately died. Also, other news uh, reports are saying that two students died. Um, can you confirm if the death toll is actually two? And if not, what's the uh, medical status, the health of the other two students who were injured? Oh, thank you. Um, for her, we are not to use propaganda to achieve our aim. And at this moment, I can only authoritatively uh, categorically state that the students died. Several others were injured. Of course, the Nigerian police would not report that 20 students were injured. It is expected of them. It is expected. If not for the press coverage yesterday that made the news go viral yesterday, the Nigerian police could have even said that there was no injury at all, nobody was shot, no students died. So it is, so we, if we want to have uh, uh, facts, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be taking the uh, the reports or the statement of the Nigerian police so serious. Mm. So several students were injured. Some of them minor injuries. Some of them critical ones, at least that they could escape with it. But we can only keep record of those that we have at hand, and that is why the Nigerian police can come out to say that look. Okay, just three students were injured, one died, and all of that. So as at this moment, I can categorically say that only one has been confirmed from my hand to be dead. Okay. Whether we are still gathering information about the situation of things for real. Okay, so Mr. Leko, I also want to ask you, the police, right, in their statement said that they conducted themselves professionally. But the statements that you've mm -hmm. made confirmed that um, that exactly mm -hmm. didn't happen. And one challenge with protests in Nigeria is how the police conduct themselves, how they fire tear gas and, you know, injure some people. So how do you expect in, a, in an ideal society for the mm -hmm. police, the law enforcement officials, to react mm -hmm. or conduct themselves during protest? Well, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'll first refute that claim by the Nigerian police that they conducted themselves professionally. And that I would, <laughs> it's, it's something that is known to us. We are now in a situation in the country whereby even the press, the journal, uh, journalists and pressmen have to put on bulletproof to cover protest actions across the country. So if the police, the men of the Nigerian police, have been conducting themselves in professional and ethical manner, we wouldn't have gotten to that stage in this country. Yeah. But let's leave that for now. Yeah. Expectedly, a professional police force should come there not with guns as if they want to kill animals. Not with guns. They can, they, uh, we, we also see it across uh, in, a, in civil societies. Same nations. What they do is 
If you want to disperse protesters, bring up water tankers, flush them with waters. These are these are at, at the at the maximum level. These are ways to disperse protesters. You know that you start shooting your your citizens. You know that you start killing innocent people. Even these tear gas, how do they how do they how do they release these tear gas? Is it not directly to, uh, aiming at people? I just mentioned the situation that happened in 20, 2015 at Federal University of Agriculture, Federal University of Agriculture, Abekuta. That it was a tear gas canister that hit a particular student, Taiwo by name, on his left eye. And that was the end. So if the tear gas had been professionally shot, you couldn't have hit him. So what we are trying to say in essence is that you gather. There is, in fact, maybe there should be a proper training for the men of the Nigerian police on how to handle situations like that. Maybe a psychological class or training can be, can be done for them. But I would not equally be surprised by the action of the Nigerian policemen over time because the reality is that they are also venting their hunger on innocent people. They are not equally okay, they are not satisfied, they are not comfortable. If you go to their, to their, uh, to their command, go to respective police headquarters commands, where they live, where the government provides for them to stay, you will see that, no, no, in, in fact, if you put some animals in those places, right. those animals would fall sick within two days. All right. Um... Two days. Like so it's expected that they are not to be, we can't have a police that is not well facilitated, that is not well trained like their foreign counterparts to behave like the civil <laughs> and professional police All right, Mr. Shuna, in, yeah, in foreign countries. Thank you very much. Thank um, you very much. We hope that there is, you know, some dialogue and uh, of course uh, there, you know, is an agreement between the, the state governor and the students. And so all this uh, will end. But thank you very much for your time and for speaking with us. We will be calling you in again if there's other developments. Thanks for speaking with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Okay, so we'll take a break here and move from that issue in Kaduna State to um, a more national one. And that's because the Vice President of Nigeria has mentioned that global tech companies would soon begin to pay taxes. Does the Nigerian Finance Act um, actually allow that? So we'll be discussing all that um, with an expert in taxation after the break. <laughs>